there was a person named Sid Saxon, right, who is the person who designed the game Acquire, which you may have heard of. Uh, he was a famous, legendary figure in the gaming world. I yep. think we mentioned him on Geek Nights when his massive, lifelong game collection was broken up and sold. 18,000 um, individual games in this collection. Yeah, and all of his papers uh, collected uh, were put into the Strong Museum, right? So if you have your papers put in a museum, you know that you are a significant figure yep. in uh, whatever field your field is. And his field was games. This is a guy, Sid Saxon was like his old dude who was just all in on games his whole life, right? He would write books about games and, you know, I want to articles point out, he was and, born in 1920. Uh, his mm -hmm. most famous game is probably Acquire. That was published in 1964. So yep. he was older than us when he published his first like super notable game, like the one that if you didn't know Acquire was from the 60s and we just got a modern copy of it and brought it to the table, you would probably assume it was made more recently than 1964. It's a solid game. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not perfect, but you know, yeah. but... You know, this was alleged, you know, and I think, you know, his biggest works actually were his books, right? If you buy one of the Sid Saxon books, it's like, it's just page after page. And like every couple pages has another game. Yeah. And they're all games. Most of them are just using like standard pieces. Like, you know, here's another game you can play with a deck of cards. Here's a game you can play with a bunch of dice. Here's, it's just like you, you buy one book and you get like a hundred fucking games in there, right? It's like, you know. This guy really, he compiled, you know, all the gaming knowledge there was. And that's why it's in a museum. Yep. Uh, but anyway, we played two of his games that we had not played previously, even though the first of which is like a game that like everyone's played. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that game is Can't Stop. Which right? I so had way actually, while I was aware of it, I had never played it until. Right. I had, I knew of it for many, many years. I just hadn't played it actually for reals, but I, I knew how to play it. Um, and it basically can't stop is almost the purest form of push your luck game. There is, that's yep. all there is to it's it. It's versus right? push your luck. Yeah. And the thing about can't stop that separates it for, I think from the other push your luck games is that in other push your luck games, there is like this steady, uh, sort of reduction of the odds, right? When you can feel yourself getting squeezed and you're like, you're like, okay, I got like a 100% chance to still be in. I got a 90% chance to still be in. I got a 50% chance yep. to still be in. All right, I got a less than 50. Now I'm out, right? Yep. It's like you can feel it, the squeeze coming on and back out. And the only time you don't back out when the squeeze comes on is when you're way behind and you sort of have to go for the onside's kick. Yep. And, right? and now that same thing still holds true in Can't Stop. But in Can't Stop, the... Odds never really squeeze you so tightly. Oh, it it right? was notable. Both me and Scott, despite being, I would say, <laughs> very good at statistical heuristics in games like this, uh, we pushed our luck to failure way more often than anyone would expect either of us to. <laughs> right, but it like, felt, but I felt good about those decisions, which means this game has got something going on. Right, it's like it never squeezes you so tightly numbers wise that you feel like you're going to be you're going to lose, you have to stop now, yep. right? And the way it, the way it works is you roll what? 46, right? Yeah, so, small number of dice. Yeah, 46. You roll 46 and you can combine them any which way into two sets of two dice each, right? So, if you're rolling 46, it's like you know, what are the odds that like a 7 is going to be in there somewhere among two dice? Really, it feels. Yeah, I haven't done the math. That feels like you can't miss. Right? Yep. It's like yeah, no you know way. what? You know where like, else it feels like that? Craps tables. Of course, it's like. <laughs> but you know what? What are the odds of four ones coming up? It could happen. What are yep. the odds of four sixes coming up? It can happen. Right? It's like you're not gonna get. It's not. Nothing is guaranteed. But to make so it feel roll, even better, it's not two independent two d sixes. It's four d six because the next step of the game is you look at the four numbers you rolled. And you arrange them into an arbitrary combination of two 2d6. Yeah, it's any which way, right? So you're like, you feel like even when, you know, you need a particular, you just need like to hit one of the numbers, right? Yep. Of that are possible between two and 12. It's like, you know, I just need to hit one of these numbers between two and 12. It's just like, yep. and you're rolling four d6. 
It feel you never feel like I'm gonna. There's no way I'm gonna get. This. And I think that feels the, like yeah. My chances are good. I'm going for it. I'm going. You can't stop, right? You had to. You you feel like you're gonna make it. You keep rolling, and then you miss, and then you're fucked. And I feel like do. that is the brilliant of this game. We didn't even get into the specific <laughs> mechanics, but the brilliance is, you are more likely to be fine than get fucked most of the time. But what that causes is this. Let it ride feeling where I got an 80% chance. That's fine. 80% chance. That's fine. And yeah. If yeah. You take 80% any- chance is fine. As long as you, what, as soon as you try eight times, yeah, it's like, that's all that- you're going to miss one of those times. Yep. Uh, can you really, right? It's like, it's gonna, you know, <laughs> even if you only try five times, it's like, okay, one of them is going to miss. Yep. You've already tried. You already got four in a row. You really want to try the fifth time on the 80% chance. So mechanically, <laughs> like the specifics, the way this works is you've got this big pattern. I got If you're on the live stream, I got a board up. You can look at, but basically you're just, it's just a, it's just a racetrack. Yep. It's just a racetrack, but there's a, it's a square, but you're approaching it diagonally. So you're trying to get all your, all your pips all the way to the end. So if I roll two sevens, I can move a pip up to on the seven track. The seven tracks in the center, corner to corner. It's the longest path. But so I got to get one. The two, easy three, to get four, numbers five, six, are, are have a long eight. path, right? So I got to roll thirteen sevens without stopping or stopping yep. at an appropriate point. But you can't stop. You got to keep going. Fuck you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or at the very edges, if I just roll two, three times, I get to the end of the two track. And if right now it's like. You, Two is pretty hard. You need to get two ones, but it's like two ones on four d six. It's like, hmm, yeah. It's a, it's a hmm. It's not a like calculate the strict odds in your head situation. You look at that. You know, if it was two d six, you'd be like, hell no, I get it. What are the odds of me rolling snake eyes? Too low. Yep. But on four d six, it's like, I'll eventually make it three times. Yeah, right? feels good to like have to like, yeah. advance, advance that if it comes up because that's a nice safety. Yeah. But uh, so even if you got something on seven. You got to keep rolling seven. Once you've got all your pips moving on the board. Right. You have three pips. So you eventually assign your pips to three different numbers on the board. Yep. And once they're all out there, right, if they're not out there yet, you can sort of assign them to any number that you've rolled and put together from 2d6 out of your four. But once all three of your pips are out there, let's say I got it on seven, eight, and 10, yep. right? I roll my 4d6. Among the four dice, I have to put together at least one seven or one eight or one ten and advance one of my pips at least one space. If I can't, with any combination of the dice, make a seven, an eight, or a ten, and I can't move any of my pips, I bust it. <laughs> and all my pips got to go back yep, but, to where they started before I started my turn. But that's the key. If you stop... But you don't want to stop. If you have the guts to stop, <laughs> then they lot that it's like a save point. They can't. They're wherever they are. They they're set and they can't be pushed any further back. And you can make some progress. And I gotta tell you, locking in a good run is really, really, really powerful. But even me and Scott. You look at it. You've rolled 11 times in a row, and things are going great. And you got something on seven, so you know you're safe. You just look at it. How can I not get a seven? Yeah. I'll just keep going until I win the whole seven track. Yeah, good. I good think job, I busted genius. back to zero like four times in a row, <laughs> and I consider myself a smart person. Yeah, I just. <laughs> so I think I think that this is a model uh, that some other push your luck games should try. Right? Is don't squeeze. You know, keep all the rest of your game is just fine. There's a lot of good push your luck games out there. Like we play, we like to play. No thanks, right? Yep. When you put the tokens on the card, right? But that game's all but about the squeeze. You, you eventually give up the, the card has so many tokens on it. You're like, of course, I'm just gonna take the card, right? Yep. But imagine if no thanks, like never squeezed hard enough, and it's like you just always like didn't want to take the card, even when there was a mountain of to- you know, yeah. um, and you just kept pushing it i don't know it would be more and that's it the game's so simple like poking around in board game geek people just make this game by drawing it or printing it on a yeah all you need is four all you need is four d6 and a piece of paper yep right and some and and some some number of objects to put on this piece of paper you really yeah i mean like i said you know but 
Uh, what's the rating on Board Game Geek? I think. Oh, uh, let me let's go back to Can't Stop. Oh, it's low. People don't people don't like. Who wouldn't it. like Ooh. this game? This game. You talk about fun economy. This game. I give Board Game Geek gives Can't Stop from 1980 a 6.9. I give it like a nine. I I was gonna <laughs> say nine as well because this <laughs> game, unless you're playing with an intolerable Spiders Georg type person. The, this game takes <laughs> maybe 15 minutes to play and it feels real good the entire time. Yep. Like this game is so fun for how simple it is. It takes so little time to teach this game. <laughs> yep. So, uh, yeah, play this game. There's no reason not to play this game. It would be an A plus Omegathon game at PAX Unplugged. Like S tier. Mm. Oh, yeah. 